Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Ripple's XRP, whatever your favorite cryptocurrency is, wouldn't it be great if you could use an accurate machine learning model that could tell you exactly when to buy or to sell? Keep watching and we'll discuss. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So a while ago I did a video on whether or not data science could be an effective tool for predicting the stock market. And the conclusion I came to was, while it's definitely better than random guessing, you're just not going to be able to do it perfectly. And I broke down three reasons for that. The first was the efficient market hypothesis. And this is basically the idea that all of the currently known information about the market is already baked into the price. So it's kind of difficult for data science or artificial intelligence to really add much to that. The second is that it's really hard to predict future shocks. I mean, think about it this way. If you knew that the pandemic was going to happen in 2020, you would have gone out and bought tons and tons of Zoom and Tesla stock. But you didn't, did you? But the third reason is that there's a bit of a conflict of interest concern as far as creating something accurate that predicts the market really well and then sharing it. Because let's think about it. If everybody knew exactly what the market was going to do, well, it's a little difficult to outperform that now, isn't it? Now, Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market in general are much newer than stocks, but they operate under very similar principles. For one thing, people are buying based on institutional adoption, and it's very difficult to tell when, if ever, these large institutions are going to sell. It's hard to predict when, if ever, the United States government or some other government drops some big bundle of regulations on it. And the same idea of a conflict of interest certainly applies here as well. Now, it's common to do either what's called fundamental analysis or technical analysis in the cryptocurrency space as well as in the stock market space. The idea with these is either to try to estimate the intrinsic value of the coin or to estimate where it's going in the future based on trends and formations that have happened in the past. That's its own thing and I'm not going to get into all of that here. Instead, I'm going to strictly talk in terms of things that my audience understands or at least may understand in the future as they go through their data science journey, which is machine learning and AI methods with a healthy dose, of course, of data science principles that are general for all types of problems. Before I do that though, just some usual asks. Number one, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell. That way, whenever I upload a video, YouTube will notify you. And lastly, I'll have a link in the description of this video to my Patreon account. And if you guys would be willing to support me over that way, it would be enormously appreciated. So usually when people talk about predicting Bitcoin price, they're talking about predicting it in short-term windows so that they can make trades. They're not necessarily talking about long-term prediction. There's not a lot out there on predicting where the price is going to be in a month or over a general longer-term horizon. And when it has been done, it's not exactly something that inspires the most confidence. This is an analysis done by a data scientist named Marco Santos, and his code is available on GitHub with an article posted on Towards Data Science in the fall of 2019 all about this exercise. So he used a seasonal auto-regressive integrated moving average, that is, a Sarima model, to predict the Bitcoin price. And as you can see, when the prediction was made, the price was around 8,000. But the range one month out for this prediction was about $5,000 to $13,000. Now I'm not trying to pick on this guy at all, because on one hand he did a great job illustrating exactly what the limitations of the time series model are, and he also did a really solid write-up of it that I highly recommend you read. And it's not just him either. Facebook can't get it more precise either. So here they did a similar prediction over the next month where they agree that the price is moving in an upward trajectory, but their interval of uncertainty one month out is from 10,000 to 14,000. In my book, that difference matters. These are just a couple examples, but I think the takeaway is pretty clear. Predicting anything one month out, especially Bitcoin, is pretty hard. 
That brings us to what I think most people are interested in, which is day trading. And if you just do a Google search for data science and Bitcoin, there's one particular term that seems to come up over and over again, and that's long short-term memory, or as it's commonly abbreviated, LSTM. For those of you who are unfamiliar, the LSTM is a deep learning method, and it's a type of recurrent neural network that takes into account both long-term dependencies as well as short-term trends. And if you look at some of the output from it, it looks like a miracle. In fact, in a couple different applications of the LSTM, after hyperparameter selection and all that jazz, the unseen test data and the predicted values match one another astonishingly closely. Now, if all of that sounds a bit too good to be true, well, that's because it is. Much credit to the author Raphael Schultz Kraft, aka at Neocortex, for putting together a great blog over at Hacker Noon, which explains why exactly this is so deceptive. Here they zoom in on a one month horizon, and you can sort of get the idea that the predicted values just look shifted from the actual values. Because as it turns out, what it's sort of doing is, it's mostly using the value from the previous day. But as you can see, there's a point towards the beginning where the actual price shoots up, but the prediction at the same time goes down. Meanwhile, towards the end, on the day where the actual price takes a big dip, the prediction ticks up slightly. Now, they were so kind here as to show what happens when you take the same graph and shift the predictions back by one day. And it turns out then it's virtually identical to the previous day's actual data. You don't need to be a professional crypto trader to realize that yes, while this looks beautiful and everything, this is not exactly going to be very useful from a practical standpoint. But I don't want to be a total Debbie Downer either. You'll notice in the examples that I've shown you so far, these things have largely been based algorithmically on the previous price points over various points in time. Sure, there have been things taken into account like daily trading volume, for example, but for the most part, these things have relied on a pattern recognition using time series data. An entirely different type of analysis to throw into this whole discussion is what's known as sentiment analysis. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's the use of keywords and natural language processing to identify subjective opinions, usually by using freely available text data, and then to transform that into some kind of structured and useful data. This is all another fairly modern branch of AI. But you couple that with the fact that it's pretty easy to extract text data from places like Reddit and Twitter, you've got yourself a pretty solid wealth of available data, as well as an enormous body of research that's being done on this topic. Plus, anybody who's been following cryptocurrency for a while intuitively understands that Elon Musk can tweet things, and the markets are going to respond in a relatively pronounced fashion. But we should have the same natural questions about this approach as we do about any other, which is, okay, that's cool and everything, but does it do any good? Well, actually, sentiment analysis is the driver behind a fairly commonly used tool both in crypto and in the stock market, which is the fear and greed index. Sentiment from different sources is broadly characterized as greedy or fearful, and then a score is provided. The idea is that if there's extreme fear, it's a buying opportunity, while if investors are too greedy, though, then that means the market is due for a correction. And this is a pretty common tool that traders used to guide their decisions in the crypto industry. And hey, this isn't financial advice or anything, but as Warren Buffett once famously said, maybe you should be fearful when other people are greedy, and you should be greedy when other people are fearful. Then that brings us to what's called the Bull and Bear Index. So this was developed by the service Augmento, which was acquired by German professional advisory firm Postera Capital. And you'll see they put a dashboard together which tracks the sentiment through a variety of sources, including Twitter, Reddit, and Bitcoin talk. In fact, you can hover over a particular part of the graph and see what keywords are trending. Obviously, correction and dip are pretty negative. These things are classified in positive or negative ways, and it comes out to a final indexed score. Again, these are tools which get used by traders all the time, and there are people out there who swear by them, but nobody has a crystal ball. 
However, I must say, I think there's tremendous promise with sentiment analysis and in this field of AI in general. I can't wait to see what the future holds as we develop better APIs, people are able to extract better and higher quality data, and then more research is done in this field. My overall thoughts are very similar to what I said in my stock market video. That is, as data practitioners, we need to have a sense of humility and realize we are never going to be able to create or find some perfect tool that's going to be able to game the market or for that matter any type of problem. And even if by some miracle such a tool could be created, the developer of that tool would have zero incentive to share that kind of thing with the public. I think to the extent data science and AI are going to help us with these market problems, it's going to be a little bit more subtle than that. It's probably going to look closer to these indices that I've showed you here, and we're going to have to evaluate their results across a probabilistic spectrum. That is, when people make decisions based on one tool, maybe they're right 75% of the time, as opposed to some other tool where they're only right 65% of the time. So we'll have to wait and see as these tools mature, people learn of new ways to use them, and we come up with some solid and robust ways of measuring performance. In the meantime, I think this is a wonderful case study in some fairly general principles of data science for just about everybody. Number one, nothing you create is ever going to be perfect. And number two, at the end of the day, it all comes down to understanding what your use case is and your data quality. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, tap the like button, consider sharing it, and also leave me a comment down below. If you're involved in the crypto trading sphere, let me know what types of tools you use. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard on data.